The following video is intended to guide you through the setup and basic use of CalMAN 5 software for home theaters. This walkthrough uses the tutorial basic workflow to introduce you to display calibration. With this workflow, you will adjust brightness, contrast, color, tint, resolution, overscan, sharpness, grayscale, and color space on your television display. Although the CalMAN 5 walkthrough in this guide is intended for first-time users, all CalMAN 5 customers will make the same basic adjustments before continuing on with more advanced calibrations. So let's get started. After the software has been downloaded onto your computer from SpectraCal.com, installed, and run, CalMAN 5 opens with an introduction workflow. The introduction workflow walks you walks you through the layout of the CalMAN user interface. It's a good idea to reference this workflow throughout the calibration process if any directions seem unclear. The introduction workflow can be accessed also via the CalMAN 5 drop-down menu in the top left-hand corner of your screen. Open Workflow Template, Home Theater Introduction. When you've completed the introduction workflow, CalMAN 5 allows you to select a calibration workflow. Any customer can access these workflows without purchasing CalMAN 5 software, though they must purchase the software and licenses to connect to hardware and run display calibrations. For this CalMAN 5 walkthrough, select the tutorial workflow. The tutorial workflow can also be accessed using the Tutorial Basic Workflow Template in Open Workflow Template, Tutorial Basic. After you read the Tutorial Basic Workflow intro page, click Next in the lower right-hand corner to continue through the tutorial. You should now be on the Pattern Sources page. This tutorial uses the AVS HD Blu-ray disc. If you do not have this disc, you can download it right from this Pattern Sources page and then burn it to a disc. Just click the Download Pattern Disc in the lower right corner of the page to download this disc image data. Click Next to advance to the Source Connect page. Insert your AVS HD calibration disc into your Blu-ray player. Click the Find Source button and then choose the manufacturer of the source. In this case, it will be pattern discs. In the model drop-down, choose AVS calibration disc 1.2B Blu-ray infrared UIRT. Leave the player on manual control. Now, click the connect button. This doesn't connect you to your Blu-ray in any manner. What this does is tell CalMAN that you're using the AVS Blu-ray calibration disc so it knows what chapters and titles to tell you to go to when picking the patterns while performing your calibrations. Click the Next button to move on. The next two pages of the tutorial go over information about visual settings, display modes, and dynamic range. Review the information to help you to understand the following adjustment steps. Now, ensure your television display is set to the correct user picture mode to be ready to begin the calibration process. These settings are usually accessed via the menu button on your remote and should be under display settings or picture controls. You are looking for such settings as custom or user. That will allow you to personally adjust and customize the picture settings. Note that the method of adjusting these display settings will vary depending on the type of display being used. 
click Next to move on to the first adjustment, Brightness. Click the Brightness Pattern button. A pop-up dialog will tell you where to select the Brightness Pattern on your AVS HD calibration disk. Once selected, a pattern similar to that shown on the right-hand side of your tutorial page will appear on your television display. This pattern is used to properly adjust your display's brightness control. Use the menu button on your remote to find the brightness control on your display. Adjust the brightness control and note the changes to the pattern on the television screen. As you increase the display's brightness, more of the numbered gray bars in the pattern will become visible. As you decrease the brightness settings, fewer of the gray bars will become visible. Adjust the display's brightness until all bars numbered 17 through 25 are at least faintly visible, with all bars numbered 16 and below not visible at all. When brightness has been adjusted so that the pattern appears as described, you will have completed the necessary brightness adjustments for your display. Click Next to move on to the next adjustment, Contrast. Click the Contrast Pattern button. A pop-up dialog will tell you where to select the contrast pattern on your AVS HD calibration disk. Once selected, a pattern similar to that shown on the right-hand side of your tutorial page will appear on your television display. This is the pattern used to ensure that your display's contrast control is properly adjusted. In the display's picture menu, find the contrast control. In each step of this walkthrough, it is important to experiment with the extremes of different settings so you can better understand how the setting adjustments change the appearance of the calibration patterns. The majority of the numbered gray bars in the contrast pattern should be visible, with the exception of bar 255. Adjust the display's contrast control as high as possible without losing the bars at the bright end of the pattern. That's called clipping and without causing any of the gray bars to appear tinted or cast with a pinkish or greenish hue. Click Next to move on to the next adjustments, Color and Tint. For most digital displays, the color and tint presets are accurate and will not need adjusting. In case color and tint are not accurately preset, we will cover their adjustment procedure. After you have reviewed the Color Decoder Information page, advance to the Color Decoder Adjustment page. Click the Color and Tint Pattern button. A pop-up dialog tells you where to select the Color Decoder pattern on your AVS HD calibration disk. Once selected, a pattern will appear on your display with white plus the six primary and secondary colors, blue, red, green, magenta, cyan, and yellow, partitioned into bars. Adjusting a display's color and tint is the only calibration procedure that requires the use of a color filter, shown at the right. A color filter is shipped with some Kalman software and hardware. Otherwise, color filters can be ordered on SpectraCal's website for only $7.95. If you wish to proceed with the calibration process without ordering a color filter, feel free to skip this step, as any required color and tint adjustments on modern displays will be minimal. If you have a color filter and would like to adjust color and tint, view the color and tint pattern on your monitor while looking through the blue section of your filter. In the display's picture menu, find the display's color and tint or hue controls. Adjust the color control to minimize the visual difference between the blue and white portions of the pattern, and adjust the tint control to minimize the visual difference between the blue and white portions of the pattern. When done with this adjustment, click Next. Adjusting resolution and bit accuracy. We will use one pattern from the AVS HD calibration disk to adjust three aspects of resolution and bit accuracy. 
The pattern can be found on track 49, chapter 5 of your AVS HD calibration disc. Select the pattern from the disc to display the following pattern on your television display. Three areas within this pattern are utilized to check overscan, resolution, and sharpness. Click Next to advance to the overscan page. The blue frame bordering the pattern is used to ensure that the picture size on your display has been properly selected. Find the zoom or aspect ratio settings in the display's picture menu. These settings are often labeled standard, normal, full screen, and or widescreen. Note how each of the different settings changes the patterns on the display. Select the zoom aspect ratio settings that shows the entire outermost square of the overscan pattern including the purple line that's only one pixel in width. Click Next to advance to the Resolution page. The Resolution sections in the top left and bottom right corners of the pattern provide a reference to verify that one pixel wide lines can be clearly viewed at the selected resolution. If your signal resolution is the same as the display's native resolution, you should be able to see distinct lines inside these areas, rather than them being blended together. Click Next to advance to the Sharpness page. Use the display's sharpness control in the picture menu to assure that the thin line edges in the pattern are neither fuzzy nor bordered by bright white lines. These artificial ghosting lines appear when the sharpness has been set too high. Click Next to advance to the Meters Information page. The next pages guide you through display adjustments that require a color meter. Display calibration software uses a light meter to take accurate readings of light and color quality. This tutorial walkthrough uses the SpectraCal C3 colorimeter. You can find the list of CalMAN supported meters on our website. The meters information page provides the definitions of tristimulus colorimeters and spectra radiometers. The SpectraCal C3 and C6 are both tristimulus colorimeters. Once done reading over the meters page, click Next to advance to the Meter Connect page. Now you're ready to set up your color meter. Hang the color meter over the top of your screen or television monitor. Position the meter in the middle of the screen, flush up against the screen. You can see meter positioning on the next page of the tutorial if you want to see an example before you continue. After you plug your meter into the computer or laptop, be sure that the device driver loads properly. Click the Find Meter button to bring up the Find Meters dialog. Here you will just click the Search button and not make any changes. After your meter has been detected, click the Target Display Type drop-down to select the type of display you are calibrating. It's important to connect to your meter before you select the display from the drop-down, as the connected meter will change the available options. Your meter will likely not need to be initialized. Click Next to advance to the Meter Positioning page. These next two pages go over meter positioning and what metered settings are. When you're done reviewing these pages, you'll click Next to advance to the Color Temperature page. Color Temperature To adjust color temperature on your display, find the Color Temperature settings on your display's menu. There should be several modes in this setting category and will either contain the settings labeled with specific color temperature values 5500, 6000, 6500, 7000, etc. or with some generic titles A, B, C, Warm 1, Warm 2, Normal, Cool 1. Select the lowest most red color temperature setting for your display. On the color temperature page just above the back and next buttons there is a small group of buttons with a play button active. Hover above the button and you'll see a button tooltip that reads Read Single. 
After you've selected a color temperature setting on your display, click the Read Single button to take a color meter reading of your display. This will bring up a pop-up that tells you what pattern to select on your AVS HD calibration disk. After you have the correct pattern on your screen, click OK to take the reading. When the meter has completed its reading, the results will show on the graph on the right-hand side of the workflow page. The target color temperature for these adjustments is 6500 Kelvin. On the History tab, in the top left corner of the workflow page, label the reading with the display's current color temperature setting, and then create a new tab for a second reading by clicking the New Tab button to the right of the first History tab. Select the next color temperature setting on the display and repeat the process that we just went over. You take readings for each and every color temperature setting on your display. Compare the readings by switching back and forth between the newly created history tabs and find the reading that most closely matches the 6500 Kelvin. Whichever color temperature setting rendered the closest reading is the setting you need to select for your display. Click Next to advance to the Gamma Select page. Gamma Select. The gamma settings on a display allow the viewer to tailor the display's output to the lighting of the viewing environment. For instance, a dim room will require a different gamma setting than a bright room. For the purpose of this tutorial, our goal is to hit 2.4 where the gold line is located at on the chart. To test the gamma settings on your display, click the Read Series button on the bottom right of the Gamma Select page. A pop-up will appear telling you what pattern to select on your AVS HD Blu-ray disc. Once you've selected the pattern at 100%, click OK. Then the pop-up window will appear again right after you take the reading, showing you the next setting you need, which would be to display the gray pattern at 60%. Note the measured gamma recorded by Calman and its variance from the target gamma. If the measured and target gamma don't match, select a different gamma setting on your display's picture menu and create a new history tab as we did when setting the color temperature. Repeat for each of the display's gamma settings. Create a new history tab for each. Do this until you can determine which gamma setting measures closest to the target gamma. Click Next to advance to the color space settings. Color space setting. Some displays may call this color gamut or may not offer a color space setting at all. If your display does not offer this, advance to the next page of the tutorial. Otherwise, continue on. The first color space calibration in the basic tutorial workflow is rather simple. Just click the Read Single button at the bottom of your screen. A pop-up will tell you what pattern to select on your AVS HD calibration disk. After you have the correct pattern on your screen, click OK to take the reading. Then, select another color space setting on your display and click the Read Single button again to test the new setting. If your two settings are both close to the square, use the one with the dot that is just outside the target triangle 
as opposed to the one just inside the target triangle. You can see the examples on the PDF of this basic walkthrough tutorial. Click Next to advance to the Grayscale Adjust page. Grayscale Adjust. The CalMan Basic Tutorial Workflow uses two points on a grayscale, 30% and 80%, to calibrate the RGB balance of your display. To begin the grayscale calibration, locate the RGB controls on your display. The RGB controls will likely be found under white balance, which may be in an advanced settings section. Look for RGB gain, drive, contrast, or high controls. Select 80 from the bottom left corner of your screen, and then press the read single button. The AVS HD calibration disk pop-up will tell you of which pattern to select. Click OK when the correct pattern is on the screen to take your reading. You want to balance the red, green, and blue columns on the RGB balance chart. It's usually best to adjust the red to match green and then blue to match green. As you adjust, repeatedly click the read single button to adjust the red and blue bars to match the green bar. Try to get the Delta E2000 value below 3. You do not have to get any lower than 3 because the human eye can hardly perceive the changes below that threshold. All right, now select 30 from the bottom left corner of your screen, and then press Read Single. The AVS HD Calibration Disk pop-up will again tell you which pattern to select. Click OK when the correct pattern is on the screen to take the reading. After you have finished balancing 30 and 80, go back and check both level adjustments to make sure these adjustment interactions have not caused your Delta E readings to move above 3. Once you're done, click Next. Congratulations! This concludes the walkthrough of the CalMan 5 Tutorial Basic. You are now ready for the Tutorial Advanced, where you will learn even more advanced techniques used worldwide in display calibration.